There are two reasons that whenever you have an LED in a circuit, you need a resistor with it. The first is for current limiting. An LED is a diode. It's a PN junction semiconductor device. That means it has a certain forward voltage drop. Common for 2 to 3 volts for an LED. Regular diodes have like 0.7 volts. Same as base emitter BJT junctions. So they are not ohmic devices. The voltage drop of the resistor is proportional to the current. The voltage drop of the diode is always what it is. The diode's conducting, it has that drop. Diode's not conducting, it's an open circuit. So the remainder of the drop is taken up by the resistor. The value of the resistor and the voltage across the resistor determine the current, which determines the brightness of the LED. LED. This idealized model has no resistor. If you do your Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this right here, you will find that it violates it. This does not work under Kirchhoff's law because in reality, there is a resistor. It's called the wire and it has milliohms or less, but that's the resistor. So what you have is an extremely low value resistor, which is not going to limit the current at all and you're going to blow out your LED. So the resistor is always there. It's just your resistor might be the wire. The other reason is when you have LEDs in parallel. Even if they're identical LEDs from the same batch, same color, same everything, there's going to be a slight difference in voltage drop, which can cause issues if they don't each have their own resistor. One of them might not come on or might come on partially. And especially if they're different colors, a red and a blue have vastly different voltage drops. So you need the resistors to be able to have different voltage drops to have the LEDs work that way. So everything I just said, hold that for a moment. Let's talk about something else. A buffer chip. It can be a straight non-inverting one, input equals output, or it can be inverting, but it's just a bunch of buffers. Whether they are inverting or not, you'll usually find them in hex varieties because that works with the number of pins chips commonly have, or at least did when these were becoming popular. And all you do is give them power, give them input signals, and it's output signals. Digital buffers. There's no reason to make a video about this. That would have been it. Hi, bye. So I bought some buffer chips because I'm sure they're handy to have, and they work fine as signal buffers, but I wanted them to be power buffers as well. And turns out I bought the wrong chip. They're not. The chip I'm using is the CD4050BE. The data sheet just says CD4050B. And if it matters, I do have the actual Texas Instruments version, not a cheap Chinese knockoff. I would assume they work identically, but who knows. These are odd little chips. I thought they were just regular buffers, but I didn't read the data sheet carefully enough. They are designed for high sync, not so much high source, meaning they're better at taking current in to the chip than putting it out. And when I looked closer at the data sheet, I saw that it was only, you know, a couple milliamps to even less than one milliamp, a couple hundred microamps. So I said, this is not gonna work unless I'm just buffering signals. But then I was reading more on the internet and people were using these with LEDs. And something interesting on the data sheet, it did not specify a safe maximum absolute rating for the output current. There was no rating at all. It told you what you'll probably get, but it never said what's the safe limit. Turns out this buffer is specific designed for signal level conversion. If you have a 5 volt device, your digital logic is usually 0 volts and 5 volts. But there's something called TTL, which is very common, which uses different voltages, and there's been several different voltages over time. And so this chip is actually able to convert input and output voltages. It's not an amplifier with negative gain. It's it's just some sort of weird converter. I don't know how it works. But it's self-limiting. That's the key. It actually self-limits its own output voltage and its output current. So what you can do with this chip to bring back the previous discussion is you can take a buffer. You could give it a signal, and of course the buffer has its own power, so the signal is high. High impedance input, I tried to measure, it wasn't even a microamp. My multimeter could not detect current. Plug the LED directly in, and it works. No shorts. The output actually becomes the voltage drop of the LED. And if you have different LEDs with different voltage drops on different outputs, each output regulates its own output. You can straight up use this chip to drive LEDs. You can control their brightness. The higher the output voltage, the lower the current. The lower the output voltage, the higher the current. So there's a sort of weird ratio there. 
proportion there. But if you just want to drive LEDs and don't worry about how bright they are, it'll work just fine. I've seen questions on the internet of how to drive LEDs without resistors, and there's always some Yahoo in the comments who's like, Oh my god, I cannot understand why you are so obsessed about saving a two-cent part. The idea is not saving a two-cent part, the idea is making everything simpler, especially when prototyping. If you are trying to prototype 16 LEDs, then having to have 16 resistors just adds more steps. It would be nice to not have to worry about it. You're going to have your normal resistor on your final manufactured product, but sometimes it's nice to just have one chip with six little buffers on it and throw it on through. Let me show you it in action. Don't worry about the mess. I recently had a tornado come through here and I'm still cleaning up. So if I activate a 5 volt power, very simple, nice digital levels. What I have here is 8 switches and 8 LEDs and I was trying to do something else. But then I was testing this hex buffer, which hex means 6. But I observed something interesting when I did put the LEDs in there. So right now, of course, there's no draw. It's actually an extremely low power part. So if I turn on this multimeter to measure current, and this one to measure voltage, I have the current multimeter going between one of the buffer outputs and the LEDs. The LEDs all have their grounds tied together, but their inputs, their positive ends, are connected to the outputs of the buffer chip. I've got six of them. I don't have a single resistor on this board. Ignore that, that's not hooked up. I don't have a single resistor hook up to any of this. It's just SPDT switches, the buffer, and the LEDs, and that's nothing else. If I turn on the first LED, 6.39 milliamps, just like there, and across the LED is 2.10 volts. I can turn it back off, back to zero current, zero volts. The output of the chip is regulating itself. If I turn on all six, the voltage drop has gone down a little bit. There is some wiggle room, but it's still around. It's within, you know, 10 millivolts. And the current is still within, you know, 10 microamps. And six times six is 36. So let's turn this off again, and I'll just turn on the first one. So once again, about 6.37 milliamps, 2.08. And if I take out this red LED, let's put in a blue one instead. So there's the blue LED. This is taking 3.01 volts, and the current's down to 5.2. Higher voltage, less current. So basically, and I haven't multiplied the numbers to see, but it feels like it's regulating the power, because power equals voltage times current. Whenever the voltage goes up, the current goes down, so it's about the same power. So that's pretty neat as well. And of course, that's still rounding because that's a cheap piece of crap. But do the other ones still turn on? They sure do. 2.91, 4.61. So the chip is not 100% isolated between these LEDs. This is a goofy thing. This is not how this chip is meant to be used, but it's working, isn't it? It sure is. Let's try some other LEDs. Let's try a dim green one. 2.14, 6.31. Slightly higher voltage than the red, slightly lower current than the red. What about a bright green one? It's just under the voltage of the blue, and there's the current. What about a white one? About the same. What about this yellow one? 2.14, 6.32. The others still work? They all work. I can have a great hodgepodge. I can switch this one out with the blue, and they're all going to work just fine. If I move my voltmeter, see if we measure the first output, 1.96, 1.91, 2.88, see, there's different voltages on the outputs. So you can just straight up plug LEDs into this thing and it's going to self-regulate. I left all six on for 15 minutes. It was perfectly fine. Nothing changed. But there's one thing I want to show you. I'm going to plug my voltmeter into the power, 5 volts. It's not going through any of the circuitry, it's just across the whole thing, power to ground. 5 volts, just like you'd expect. But if I turn an LED on, it's wiggling a little bit. Let's turn some more LEDs on. With all 6 LEDs on, it goes down to 4.83, the actual output voltage. If I unplug the chip, it goes back up to 5. But if I plug the chip in, see, like I said, this is not intended and it's having some weirdnesses, but it works. And just in case anyone asks, the reason I have this resistor, it's like 200 ohms or something. So if I plug in, it's just between the positive and negative, like a bypass resistor. It really doesn't affect this much, but you saw the current jump up, so it is connected. And of course, the multimeter was a 1 mega ohm resistor, but this is a low impedance resistor. So neither one is really having an impact. It's still affecting the rail. So if you're making a circuit, you might want to consider this. But... If you're just plugging in, like if you're making an LED board, right? If you're making 
an LED output board, and you just have its own power supply. So you have one plug into the wall, and then, you know, a whole bunch of LEDs, and then you can use these chips. It doesn't matter if it's messing with the rail, it's connected to the transformer in the wall, it's obviously not going to affect your wall voltage. So that'll work perfectly. Full disclaimer, this is not an intended use of the chip, and I have not done incredibly thorough testing, but it is on the internet, where everything is true. So I cannot speak to the longevity of your chip. I can speak, however, to the fact that with six LEDs, which is the maximum, it was only drawing about 36, 37 milliamps. Five volts times 36 milliamps, that's not much power. And it indeed was not getting hot to the touch after 15 minutes. So I don't think it's ever going to fail other than, you know, normal because things fail. I think it's fine. It seems unsafe to stick this thing into a bigger circuit because it can affect the rail voltage, but it doesn't affect it too much, so it might not be a problem. But if you're just making outputs, if you're trying to have a control panel, if you want to have several indicator LEDs on something, you can slap just one of these chips per six LEDs. There you go. And it's a buffer. So even if you have a resistor and an LED, you don't want to plug that into a signal source. You still want to buffer it. So this just lets you buffer without also adding resistors. But again, you don't control the brightness. I'm making my own LED board, and I am using resistors still because I want to control the brightness. But this is a, ha we'll call this a, an electronics hobby hack. And that's cool. And if you don't want to do it, and if you don't like it, don't do it. Don't do it. But hey, it's an option. And I'm here to give you options. So with that, I'll be seeing you.